Okay guys, um, I just completed an AC repair on this 2006 Altima 2.5 liter engine. Um, I hooked up my gauges. The air conditioner was not cooling very well. It was really not cooling well at all. It wasn't, it wasn't good. Um, hooked up my, age, my gauges. Um, this is the low side connection for that and this is the high side connection. Um, and the high side pressure was too low and the low side pressure was too high. Normally the pressures will be about 150 psi on the high side, 30 psi on the low side. Um, it was like 60 to 70 psi on the low side and like 120, maybe 110 psi on the high side. Um, it was not off terribly much, but that's, indi that's an indication that the expansion valve is bad when the, when the high pressure is too low and the low pressure is too high. So this is what the expansion valve looks like. This is the original that I pulled from the car. Okay, the expansion valve is located in the firewall right back here. And there's a 10, millim 10 millimeter bolt that you have to remove that re lets you remove this bracket that holds the two, the low side, low pressure and high pressure uh, lines that go into the expansion valve allows you to pull those away you will have to evacuate the system first so most of us don't have the equipment for that so you'll need to take it to a mechanic and pay them to do that and capture the uh, the Freon so um, take what you'll do is take that bolt off this bracket will come off um, it will actually pivot off of this low smaller the high the high pressure lower smaller line and then you can bring it and bring it up here um, it, it's completely looped around the, the larger low pressure pipe. Okay, once you remove this, there are two four millimeter Allen screws that you'll have to remove, and then the expansion valve, um, it sits like this with this round piece to the right, um, in about three, two to three inches inside the firewall. So once you take that 10 millimeter bolt off, the 10 millimeter bolt, you'll screw it into the, the hole for the expansion valve and then you'll use that as a handle to pull the whole assembly out and, you'll, and it'll come out pretty easy. Now when you take these lines off, even after it's been evacuated, there might be a little bit of pressure. So when you pull it off, it, it, may, it may spew on you some, some oil and, and Freon. So you'll want to add a little bit of oil also after you've done the job. Okay, like this job is actually easy. It, I would say this is a pretty easy job in general when, as far as the expansion valves go. A lot of times you have to remove uh, the whole evaporator from inside taking out parts of the dash and such to get to it. In this, in this job you don't have to. It all comes out through the firewall. Now, there's two difficult parts on this job. First of all, the Allen screws that go into these two holes here will probably not want to come out easily. So it's very important that you have a very good tool to get a good bite on it. I used four millimeter Allen bit. This is a Craftsman, so it's a pretty good quality bit. And I used this, um, a good quality socket wrench and a medium to short sized extension. This extension is a two, two and a half inch. If it was an inch shorter, it would have been ideal because this one actually when you get in between the firewall and the engine, your, your hands are hitting the engine with that extension a little bit. If it was a little bit shorter, it would have been great. Okay, you'll also need a 10 millimeter socket to remove the bolt. Also, highly recommend that you use some anti-seize lubrication, thread lubrication, on all threads. Basically, the two Allen screws, once you get them out cleanly, and um, also the 10 millimeter bolt. Put the um, anti seize, put the anti seize thread uh, lubricant on those, so that uh, the next time this job is done, there won't be a fight. All right. The two hard parts for this are removing the Allen screws. If you can get past that without damaging the head, you can reuse the screws. I was able to do it, but again, use good quality tools. Also, make sure you're lined up perfectly when you're removing the screws. Um, if you're off a little bit, you'll booger the heads and the screws won't be reusable. The next part is actually optional in my opinion. There are two O-rings that slide on the tubes for the evaporator. And 
do not remove them unless you look at them and they're obviously bad just leave them on there because i removed them and it was hell putting them back on uh you can't just put your hand down in there because it's two or three inches into the firewall you can't get into it all right so if you have to replace them this is how you do it find something like this now this is um a broken uh, the mount for a broken um, uh, rain gauge and uh, this actually worked quite well for putting the o-rings on what you'll do is you'll get some lubricant and you'll lube this up the end and you'll push the o-rings on here then you'll insert this pointy part into the pipe and then use your finger and push the o-ring off and it will just fly onto the thing now it's not perfect I lost two o-rings inside the inside the car and the o-rings were two dollars each uh, because they're special o-rings so uh, make sure that you know when you're doing this the first times I did that I didn't lube it so it's if you lube it it makes it easier that was that's a trick but um, basically don't even remove those o-rings unless you really think they have to be done because the ones I removed they were actually good they were still in good shape and this car is well over uh, 10 years old so they didn't need to be replaced but I you know I didn't know I couldn't really see it, and so I thought, well, you know, I've, I've got it open. I'll just replace them. Nah, just leave them in there and try it. If you ha if it's if it leaks, then you have to replace it. That's one thing. But I wouldn't. I recommend just going with them unless it's obvious that it's broke or it's flattened to hell. Just use it. Well, um, so after you've done the job, and and you'll need to charge it, um, you'll want to put. 17 and a half ounces of freon that's all the system requires and uh after replacing that uh, that expansion valve this car really blows nice and cold um and also you'll want to replace the oil that you lost you, um, they, they sell the oil in three ounce cans and that's probably a little more than you're going to lose if you only have to open the system once um so maybe put half that in um and that's it guys um this job will take you i mean uh, it takes an hour to, to remove everything and install everything if you don't have to replace the O-rings or even less than that. You can do it in half an hour. It's a very easy and very quick job. Um, but then you're going to want to evacuate the system with a vacuum pump and you'll want to, first of all, draw a, a vacuum on it. Watch it for an hour. Make sure it's not, you know, it's not got a leak. Then you're going to want to use the pump and pump it down for a full hour. Then after that, you'll want to charge it with 17 ounces of R134A. Um, that's it, guys. Um, it's not that bad of a job. Good luck.